By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing some casual X points against friend of the channel, Herfolk, and she is bringing in a deck that I've called Venomous Wreck. It's the Wreck and Psychic Venom. It's black and blue. I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to do the deck tech in a moment, and I've got a lovely deck uh, photo of her deck. I think it's very clever. Her folk, very clever. And I am playing with a um, Elementals deck. It's called the Elementals Vault. It's been on the channel a few times. It's actually also X points legal. And maybe you're wondering what is X points? So X points is a way of playing old school magic where some of the cards have points allocated to them and you can only spend 10 points maximum when you're building your deck. For example, it's impossible to put all the power in your deck because Moxon are two points. And, you know, they're all appointed cards. So if you put them all in, you have way too many points. So the point list is there to make sure that you kind of create a leveled playing field. Um, it's pretty cool and it's a pretty popular format. If you want to know more about X points, there's a link to their uh, Facebook group in the description below. Talking about the description, I know that some of you also like to skip the deck deck or watch the deck deck after the actual games. The easiest way to do so is also by checking out the description below because there you will find uh, several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. Now I am going to start with the deck deck. I think I'm going to start with uh, the deck of my opponent, Herfolk. Let's have a look at her build. And here we see the deck of Herfolk. So I've called it Venomous Wreck because of the four copies of Psychic Venom and the four copies of The Wreck. Now this is first and foremost a discard deck. It's that simple because the deck loves, sorry, The Wreck loves discard. Why is that? The Wreck is an artifact for one and it punishes you for having less than three cards in hand. When you have two cards in hand, you take a damage. One card in hand, two damage, zero cards in hand, uh, you take three damage. It's as simple as that. So she wants me to lose my cards pronto. And how does she want to do that? Well, she's playing with four Hypnotic Spectres, of course. They're going to force me to discard if I cannot bolt them because I'm playing with Lightning Bolts, luckily. So hopefully I'll be able to bolt the Hippie. Um, and she's playing with four Him to Turek. So Him to Turek, of course, the very strong card from Fallen Empires, two black to cast for the sorcery. And then the opponent has to discard two cards at random. And that at random part makes this such a good card. Even if it would have been two black discard two cards you choose it would be really good because it's card advantage but the at random makes it like sick anyway uh, we also see mind twist of course in the deck um, because of the discard theme and we see two disrupting scepters so there's really a lot of discard going on and then uh, we also see mind bomb i think mind bomb is a very clever way to force your opponent to discard uh, his or her hand you know mind bomb a sorcery or originally from the dark one blue to cast it deals three damage to both, to both, to yourself and to your opponent. Um, but then you can discard a card, and for each card discarded that way, you prevent a damage. So in theory, I could discard three cards and take no damage from the Mind Bomb, but are you really gonna do that? No. So basically, Mind Bomb is like a, a blue lightning bolt, but then a very bad version of it. But I really like it in this uh, deck because you don't wanna discard to the wreck, so you almost always are gonna take the damage. And if you are going to discard, it means you're in so deep, you're like almost dead that, yeah, you know, you basically have the win anyway. And this is the nail in the coffin. So I really like that idea of combining the wreck uh, with Mind Bomb. I think it's super cool. Uh, I also like the Psychic Venoms in here. So four Psychic Venoms because they go together quite well with, uh, for example, the Power Sinks that are in this deck. Now, Power Sink is a counter spell where you counter target spell by tapping more mana than your opponent. And if your opponent can tap more mana, it counters the power sink, right? But the cool thing about power sink is that your opponent has to tap the lands, right? So if you power sink for three and I only have two lands untapped, I have to tap them for power sink, even though I'm unable to counter the power sink. And that's really good with Psychic Venom because then if you have a land with Psychic Venom on it, I have to tap it and I take two points of damage. So Psychic Venom, power sink, it's a really good synergy. We also see uh, Icy Manipula Manipulator there in the bottom corner. Uh, her folk told me that she's she's looking for a second and a third one because she thinks they work really well in this deck. And her folk, I agree. I think if you can get one or two more, I would definitely play them in here. I think they're super good with the Venoms uh, because, of course, an Icy Manipula Manipulator can tap down a land. And if you then tap down the land with the Psychic Venom uh, Enchanted on it, you know, it's just two damage all the time. If you do that on a City of Brass, it's actually three damage. 
Another cool thing, by the way, to do is if you don't have the Icy Manipulator, but you do have a Psychic Venom and your opponent has like a normal land and a City of Brass, I would go for the normal land because then you're kind of forcing your opponent to choose the City of Brass and they still take a damage. So you're kind of, your plan still works. And in the ideal scenario, they have to use both lands and they take three points of damage. So I think that's, that's a really good idea. Unless, of course, you know, sometimes you want to take the City when you're playing, for example, against a five color deck and you kind of want to cut them off from the City of Brass because that's going to give them access to all colors. Or at least you want to make it really expensive for your opponent to use it. I mean, three points of damage per time you get you use your City of Brass, that is really, really steep. Anyway, this is the deck of her folk. I'm actually really looking forward to, to play against this. I don't play against these decks often. And maybe that's weird to say because I'm not a huge fan of this card. But yeah, I just want to see how this Psychic Venom Direct thing works. I just, I'm curious. I like it. Anyway, let's take a look at my deck. And here we see Elemental's Volt. It's blue, it's red, and it's completely made out of reprints. Now, I don't have the dice here on my deck photo showing you the amount of points uh, for X points, but I can tell you, I think my Wheel of Fortune, my Brain Geyser, and my Soul Ring, I think those are all pointed cards, and together they make like 10, I think. They're really high, like Soul Ring is like a gazillion points. But anyway, um, what this deck wants to do is, actually there's a theme to the deck, right? You see the four mana volts there and then in the middle you kind of have this block of four by four with all the elementals and volcanic islands in them the the lore of the deck is that you're a wizard and you're trying to control the elements and you're finding your mana volts and by turning the mana volts sideways so by tapping them you're releasing the elements right so you can start uh casting your earth elemental fire elemental water elemental uh, air elemental so by casting those and then you're like the king of the elements and if you're the wizard controlling the elements how can you lose a match right that is my idea so i'm hoping to drop a mana vault turn one turn two turn that mana vault sideways and just cast a big fat monster a big cool elemental and uh, and rule the battlefield that is my plan it is a little bit risky though because if my opponent's able to counter or terror just get rid of the elemental then i'm stuck with the tap mana vault and i'm just taking a lot of damage um, basically, another line of play could be to play the Mana Vault turn one, turn two, just play my, my next blue card, keep a counter spell open and pass the turn. That kind of depends again on what kind of deck I'm playing against, what the strategy of the deck is, if I have counter magic in hand, etc, etc. So there are a lot of like elements that come into play when you make these decisions, but the core strategy of the deck was, or is, I should say, play out your Mana Vault turn one, turn two, play out a big fat monster. In this case, an elemental, because elementals are so cool. Um, yeah, so that's what I want to do. I'm also playing with a few cards that are usually really good against uh, power decks, like, for example, Blood Moon is really good. Energy Flux is really good against the power decks because they're really tough for people playing with Moxon. I think today, I mean, Energy Flux could be annoying against the Rex, but they're not going to be that good. Um, the Blood Moon, it's not going to do much because I think her focus, she does play with four City of Brasses, so at least they turn her City of Brasses into uh, into mountains, which is something, I guess, but they're not going to be ideal. Now, um, her folk doesn't have a sideboard yet, so I'm also not going to sideboard. We're just going to keep it this way. Um, so I'm just going to keep it with the 60, so I'm not going to board out the Blood Moons and the uh, maybe even the Energy Fluxes after the first game, even though I would normally do that because I think they're not that useful in this matchup. Although the energy fluxes, again, they work against the wreck, and I also use them to actually get rid of my own mana vaults. So it's like a clever way not to take the damage anymore and just, you know, put it away. Um, the rest of the deck besides the, the elementals is basically just your burn package with your lightning bolts and your fireball, your earthquake. I think earthquake, earth elemental, I just love that. I think when you play earthquake, I want to play earth elemental and vice versa. It just It just feels good, you know? Um... So that kind of works, Earthquake, with a lot of big monsters because, yeah, just an easy way to wipe out any weenie strategy. I'm also playing a Disintegrate there. I'm playing a Fork. So I think Fork is really cool. Again, against Power Decks, Fork is super cool because they're going to like play out their Ancestral Recall or whatever. They're going to be, okay, I'm going to copy it, whatever. I am looking forward. Maybe it's going to work to maybe Fork the Mind Twist. So if her folk Mind Twists me, I'm going to Fork it or Fork him to Turek. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and then in the blue area, of course, I'm playing with Control Magics. I'm playing with Brain Geyser, uh, which is also one of those pointed cards, by the way. And I'm playing with four counter spells. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of your package. By the way, I'm playing with one Unsummon. I think Unsummon is a little bit underestimated. Every time I draw it, 
it's been useful. And every time I think maybe I need to add more on summons. I think on summon is really this sleeping giant, especially in a format like X points where people usually play with a lot of creature removal because you can use it to protect your creature by, you know, on summoning it back to your hand. But also it's also really good because in X points they're playing there. It, it's a creature heavy format in general. So it's also nice to do that. For example, what if her folk today plays dark ritual into hippie turn one and I can just unsummon it back to her hand. I mean, that's going to be really annoying. That would be, I'm hoping I can make that play. That would be so sweet. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. We looked at the deck of her folk. Now let's go to the game. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play, looking at my hand. Am I going to keep it? And her folk is sitting on the left and she's playing with a, a blue and black deck. I've called it Venomous Wreck. It's like a discard deck with the wreck and she's also playing Psychic Venoms in them. And I'm playing with my Elementals Vault deck. So that's basically a lot of Elementals and I'm playing with Mana Volts and I'm trying to cast them early in the game. It's a blue and red deck. Starting here with a City of Brass and passing the turn. It's very bright on my side of the board, by the way. And there's a Mind Bomb. Yeah, this is a very interesting card. A card originally from the Dark. This is, I believe, the 4th edition version. It's a sorcery for one blue. And each player takes 3 points of damage. But you can also choose to discard a card to prevent 1 point of damage. You can discard 3 cards and you take no damage. Obviously, I don't want to discard. But I do like the idea of playing Mind Bomb with the Wreck. Because, of course, with the Wreck, you want your opponent to discard. And, and maybe there are some moments in the game where you're actually kind of forced to discard cards because you're just too low. So it could work. I, I, I kind of like that synergy. And here we see a Psychic Venom. So four in the deck here of her folk. She's going to put that on my mountain. And I think that's a good decision because now I've got City of Brass that's going to hurt me and my mountain's going to hurt me. So my whole mana base is painful. Six cards in hand. And I'm passing the turn. Missing a land drop here. Oh, man. It's looking, already looking really bad for me here because I started with a card less. Now I'm missing a land drop. Ah, oh, that's so bad. It's like a double handicap. Tapping two here, gonna take a damage. Oh, there's a Him to Turek, yeah. There are four in there. This is what I can expect, I guess. A Him to Turek. So I'm gonna lose two cards here to the Him to Turek at random. Him to Turek is so good. So I just talked about a double handicap, call this a triple handicap, having to discard more cards now. And look at that, losing my Wheel of Fortune. That Wheel of Fortune actually was a great way to kind of get back into the game. If, if I can find like a land from the top of my deck, play the wheel, at least I have seven cards like my opponent. Wow, I mean, it's, it's looking so bad for me. Passing to turn here back to her for missing a land drop again. There's an island. I mean, the only thing I've got going for me is that her folk is kind of hurting herself with the City of Brasses. That's something, but I'm not going to win it that way, obviously. And she's not putting pressure on, so that's kind of lucky. Okay, I found something from the top of my deck. It's a Mana Vault, casting it with the City of Brass, dropping to 16. Is she going to counter here? There's a Power Sink, and this is, this is really cool to see, actually, the synergy between Power Sink... And Psychic Venom, yeah, she's got to tap one more land. She's going to take a damage, but because of Power Sync, I've got to tap that one land with the Psychic Venom, even though I'm unable to uh, to counter the Power Sync. So this is really bad for me. I lose the Mana Vault that I really, really needed because I want to cast my big Elementals, right? And I'm taking two damage, so I'm going to drop to 14. This is just really, really bad for me. Anyway, let's see what her folk uh, can do. Just passing the turn, so that's kind of lucky, you know, that she's not putting full pressure on, like an Hypnotic Spectre right now would be really killer for me, but she's not doing it. Another him would be a killer as well, but she's just passing the turn. I found a land from the top of my library, maybe I can do something with that, although this deck really needs five mana, because I'm playing four air elementals, four earth elementals, and playing water elementals, I'm just playing all of them, like all those sweet vanilla creatures. So this is quite bad. Uh, taking three points of damage, dropping to 11. There is a Blood Moon. I'm not sure if this is a good move. And the reason I'm not sure is because now my City of Brass doesn't work anymore. You know, I don't have any island. So I guess when I'm making this decision, I don't have a lot of blue in my hand. And the thing is, now her folk isn't hurting herself anymore. Yeah, like this Icy would have set her back two points of damage. Doesn't matter that much, though. But then again, 
it, usually when people play black, they need double black. You know, him's double black, hippie's double black, uh, the drain life she's playing. So then it's good to kind of turn those cities into mountains. In the meanwhile, I'm just passing the turn again, not really doing anything. And that I see with that psychic venom land, that's going to be so painful for me. She can tap it down and deal two points of damage. I would drop to nine. Let's just wait and see what she's going to do. So she's going to tap it in my main face. I remember we kind of had a little talk about this where I said, maybe you want to do it in my upkeep because then you're going to deal two damage to me and I cannot use that land to cast something else. Um, and then actually her folks, she said, you know what? You're on 11. I'm going to put you on nine. Then if it's your turn, you're going to untap your land and you want to use it again. That's fine because you're going to drop to seven. You're closer to death. You know, so she wants to give me the option to use it twice. And that kind of makes sense as well. You know, she wants me to use the land with Psychic Venom on it. There's a Mind Bomb. Yeah, so now the Mind Bomb later in the game is already getting better, right? Now I have to choose and I'm actually considering discarding a few cards here. Discarding a Blood Moon, which makes sense because there's already one on the board and I'm playing against Blue Black, so they probably don't have an answer to my enchantment. So discarding and just taking two points of damage. Look at her folk discarding two cards at the Drain Life and the Hippie that I talked about. Okay. So the, the drain life, right, because of that blood moon, it's gotten slightly worse or else she could have drained me for two. Um, and yeah, the hypnotic uh, specter would have been really good at this point in the game, but she cannot play it because of the blood moon. So I guess the blood moon was worth it. Anyway, five in hand passing the turn. And her folk drawing cart number three. I can't believe she's on 12. Did she take that much damage? Anyway, playing the wreck here. I mean, it's looking really good for her, folks. She has to, to find some more him to Turex or maybe a Disrupting Scepter. She's playing two in her deck. She can start discarding my hand. It would be nice to see kind of the wreck fully functioning. Yeah, there's a Disrupting Scepter. This does mean, though, that she cannot tap my Psychic Venom. I think if I would have been her, I probably wouldn't have played out the wreck because it doesn't deal any damage yet. And it would have kept the mana open to tap down the land with Psychic Venom on it. She could have put me on five. And I'm just passing the turn. Now remember, I mean, I'm doing nothing this turn, uh, this game, right? <laughs> I'm like just passing. But that's the thing with my deck. I need five mana. I need five mana. I play elementals. They're big, fat creatures. It's not complicated, but I need the mana. Anyway, uh, passing the turn here. I mean, her folk can now use her scepter and tap my Psychic Venom land. I think that's actually good value for her. And I, she's probably still looking for a second black to start casting the hymns and the hippies and, and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, discarding a counterspell, yeah, that counterspell is not going to happen this game. And all, all our pieces are on the board anyway. Like, counterspell is a good card um, when the playing field is equal, but when you're behind, counterspell is just uh, really, really tough. Anyway, tapping down my Venom, going to five... Okay, casting casting a bolt, maybe trying to win it with burn. I mean, uh, she's still on nine though. Like I need three bolts. That's that's like far fetched. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. Four cards in hand. So slowly she's getting to a uh, the wreck being um, being activated here. Remember, uh, the wreck deals a point of damage for each card below three. So if I have two cards in hand, I take a damage. Ooh, there's a fireball. So I'm really now trying to attack the life total. The problem is I got to tap those uh, psychic, the psychic venom land, right? That's done a lot of work this game, especially with that icy combination. I'm on five now. Oh, on three actually. Wow. Yeah, still had to take the damage. So I'm on three now. Wow, that's bad. So next turn I'm gonna untap, gonna go to one. Maybe, maybe I can get a draw out of this if I have another burn spell and and, and a mana vault. Uh, but she's on six. That's not gonna work. Yeah, there's the Psy Blast anyway. So there's a Psionic Blast, four damage to me, two damage to her, so she's going to go to four. So I did, I did get her all the way up to four. I, I, I wonder, I mean, did she take that much damage from her City of Brasses before I turned them into mountains? I guess she did. Anyway, um, yeah, this was just a really bad draw for me from the start. Taking the Mulligan, going to six, not finding anything, and of course her folk taking advantage of that with that Psychic Venom. Really nice to see the synergy between Power Sync, Icy, you know, and, and the Psychic Venom. That was really good. This is just game number one, though, so we're going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two.
Game number two, here we go. So hopefully I can keep my hand, you know, and um, okay, it looks like I keep my hand, right? So, okay, six in hand, having a land as well, passing the turn. So hopefully I also have enough lands. That would be nice. It's very bright on my side of the board. I need to check my uh, my cam settings for sure, because you can like adjust the brightness. So if I adjust the brightness, you have a better view. But anyway, uh, continuing here. Playing a second island, which is actually really good for my deck. It's something that I didn't accomplish in game number one. And two blue, of course, are important when you're playing with counter spells. Let's see what her folk uh, can do. If she finds a second swamp, maybe she can cast him to Turek. And then she can see if I have a counter spell. There is a city of brass. Let's see, does she have the hymn? Or not. Tapping the swamp into Dark Ritual. There is one him to Turek, so she has one floating. Tapping another one, taking a damage for a Psychic Venom. Look at that, I don't have a counter spell. <laughs> oh, this is bad. Oh no. This is bad. Losing two cards, a Mana Vault and a Control Magic. Okay, that's not the worst. That's not the worst. Uh, Control Magic, not a great card against her folk because she's not playing with a lot of creatures. And uh, we're playing without sideboarding, by the way. So it's just a quick matchup. Three games. This is game number two. Playing a Volcanic Island here. So at least I can find my Lance, but that him doesn't feel good. And that Psychic Venom is there again. Remember game one, that one Psychic Venom dealt so much damage. There's an island here for her folk. I was really expecting me to counter away that him, but yeah, didn't have it. She's tapping two here. There's another Venom. Wow, this is so annoying. If she now, for example, power sinks something in the future and I have to tap out, I'm just gonna take four damage just for one power sink. There's a city of brass. Four cards in hand in a past turn. Three cards in hand. Four cards in hand also for her folk. She's on 19. I'm on 20. There's the wreck. Not active yet. So it's not going to do anything. We haven't really seen the wreck in action. Maybe this game. Who knows? If she finds some more him to two wrecks. I mean, him is just so good because, oh, I'm going to do something. Taking a damage. Is there going to be a Mana Vault? Playing a Mana Vault. This is quite nice because now I can actually use the Mana Vault to cast, for example, an Air Elemental and I don't have to take the damage from the Venoms. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I know, I know myself. I recognize my plays. <laughs> so it's a 4-4 Flyer. Beautiful art by Richard Thomas. The Air Elemental. I think actually one of my favorite cards because of the art and the fact that, I mean, a 5... 4-4 four, four Flyer in blue is just really good. There's a Hypnotic Spectre. That's good because I can block it with my Air Elemental. But actually what I want to do with my Air Elemental is attack, of course. So now I'm taking a damage from the Mana Vault. Going to drop to 18. I mean, I can... I'm going to untap it, but I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to take a damage. Okay, so I was on 18. Going to drop to 17 then, I guess. Attacking here, interesting. Does that mean that I've got maybe a lightning bolt in hand? So she's taken the damage, gonna drop to 15. I'm kind of signaling here that I've got a bolt, but if I have a bolt, I think I should have played it main because she can now play a power sink then. That would be pretty disastrous for me. Let's see what's gonna happen. If I would be her folk, yeah, I would first attack, see if I do anything. So she's gonna attack. Taking a point of damage, gonna play the Bolt. Okay, I th really think I should have played this main because if she has a Power Sink now, like she doesn't, but if she would have had a Power Sink, she could have Power Synced away my Bolt. I would have lost a card and taken four points of damage from the Venoms. Whereas if I would have played in my own main, she had some more lands tapped. So I think that, that I think she didn't have enough to, uh, to also Power Sync. Look at this, a Brain Geyser, that's pretty good. 
The downside for her folk though is that she is opening herself up next turn, but I do understand this play. So she's gonna refill her hand. Four cards in hand now. That was a brain geyser for four. That is pretty good. Gonna take a damage again from the mana vault. Dropping to 14. Three cards in hand. I can attack her now, put her on 10. Exactly what I'm doing. I kind of expected my deck to play out more fatties, but maybe... Oh, look at this. Taking tons of damage. To play a big fat creature. There is an Earth Elemental. 4-5 Vanilla. I just love these creatures. And actually the 5 toughness makes it really difficult to kill. Like you cannot play a side Blast on it. A lot of creatures in old school are like 4-4 four, four creatures. So it's not a good block them blocking the Earth Elemental with a 4-4. Four, four. So it's actually a better card than you than you might think. So next turn, I've got 8 damage on the board. Wow. We're both on 10, by the way, because I'm just taking so much damage from those Venoms again. Those Venoms are doing some work. So here we see her folk. What is she going to do? Tapping 3, 2 blue and a black. Taking care of the air elemental. That makes sense. Downside for her is that she does take two damage, so she's still on a two-turn clock with that Earth Elemental on the board. Can she do something else? Okay, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. She could use that to chum block the Earth Elemental. I wonder if she does that. I mean, she could also go to four. And then the turn after, maybe um, take a card out of my hand. Anyway, going to drop to eight now. So again, we're, uh, we're on the same life total. Tapping a blue for an unsummon here. So now I am playing it main, which I understand, again, because of that power sink threat. So playing the unsummon here on the Hypnotic Spectre, gonna attack her for four. She's gonna drop to four. And I'm passing the turn, it seems. So now the wreck is actually going to be active. I've got two cards in hand, meaning I'm going to take a damage from the wreck. I'm happy because of that. I want to see, I want to see the wreck do stuff. But I'm also one game down, so I want to win this, so we go to game number three. Anyway, let's first wait and see what her folk is going to do here. She can recast the, uh, they have not expect her, of course, but maybe she's got better options. One of the things we discussed after this uh, match, I remember we talked about maybe this would be a good deck to add some Sengir Vampires. Just so that you have a little bit more pressure. She's tapping six. Ooh, mighty drain life. Ooh, that is a really good drain life. She's going to take a damage from the City of Brass. So therefore... She's only gaining three life instead of four, but I'm on four now. And it's also kind of tough for her folk because she just needed one more swamp to kill my earth elemental. And that would have been ideal for her. It's always interesting, all these choices you make. Like, for example, she could have recast a hippie and chump blocked the hippie with the earth elemental, hoping that the next turn she would draw maybe a dark ritual or another swamp. That would have been a line of play again, uh, as well, but I also understand this line of play. Because look at my life total. I'm so low. Are we going to see? Yeah, we're going to see a bolt. Putting her on three because she used her own city, then playing that bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this was a close match. I'm ending on one measly life. You were so close, her folk, but now it is 1-1. One, one, and that means we're going to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. It's her folk on the play. So I guess she's a slight favorite being on the play, right? Although with her deck, it doesn't really matter that much. She's playing the wreck here, turn one. And I just realized looking at game two, there were actually quite a lot of the wreck activations, but I just, I didn't spot it for some reason in my commentating. But when I was looking back, I noticed in the editing, hey, there was quite a lot of the wreck activations there. So that was quite nice to see. 
Let's see if she can use the wreck here. I've got a really good opening for me, like Volcanic Island into Mana Vault. This is what I want to do. Let's see if I'm going to take the risk and play out a big fat elemental. There's a City of Brass. Am I going to take the risk? I haven't seen a terror or anything, so I think I could take the risk, but I'm passing the turn. There is an island here. She's going to tap three. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Are we going to see a counter spell here on the Hypnotic Spectre? Or a Bolt, perhaps? I mean, I think against my deck, the Hippie is not that scary. Because I've got Bolts, I've got Counter Magic, I've got, you know, big flyers of my own that I can play out early if my deck does what it's supposed to do with the Mana Volts. Yeah, there's the Counter Spell, countering away here the Hypnotic Spectre. So I'm going to drop to 19 because of the City of Brass damage. Let's see what I can do. There's an island. Looks like I'm going to play something big. Tapping five. Are we going to see an air elemental here? If we're going to see an air elemental, then maybe I should have kept the... Oh, it's a water elemental. Okay, that makes sense. Because I wanted to say if it's an air elemental, maybe I should have kept the counter spell in hand. But with the water elemental, I understand the decision to counter away the hypnotic specter. Water elemental being a 5-4. And it's not the man in the boat. The water elemental is actually the wave right next to the boat. There is another Hypnotic Spectre. And remember, Hypnotic Spectre flies, so it's going to fly over my water elemental next turn. If it sticks, of course, maybe I've got a uh, bolt. I guess I don't, or else I would have played on end step. I'm going to drop here to 18 because of the mana vault. I haven't found a single energy flux, by the way, because usually I use my energy fluxes as well to kind of get rid of uh, the mana vaults. And in this case, it's also quite nice against the wreck on the side of her folk. Even though the wreck isn't active yet, I've got four cards in hand. Attacking here, dealing five points of damage to her folk, dropping to 15, passing the turn. So now she can attack, and I'm going to lose a card. Unless, of course, I have a lightning bolt. So that's land number five by her folk, and she's going to attack with the 2-2 Hypnotic Spectre. Yeah, I'm shuffling up my hand. That is not great. The thing with Hypnotic Spectre is if you don't have an answer, it gets painful so quickly. So remember, it's a random discard. And I think that's one of the things that makes Hypnotic Spectre so good. If you could choose what you want to discard, it would be... So it would still be good, but it wouldn't be as good. There's a hymn to Turek. Oh my god. No, no. And look at that. The wreck is going to be active next turn as well. Only one card in hand. That means I'm going to take two points of damage. Going to lose two cards here. Air Elemental and a Mana Volt. Oh, that Air Elemental. Oh no. Oh no. I wonder if I... I could have played... Mana Volt, and then the Air Elemental, right? That probably would have been better, like, last turn. I guess I didn't want to take double damage from the Mana Volt. Look at this. Untapping the Mana Volt, dropping to... Is that a good decision? And I'm doubting now, so maybe I'm going to take it back here. Because I'm taking a damage from City of Brass anyway, and maybe it's better. Exactly. I think this is better. I'm going to go to 15. Oh, I'm forgetting the damage from the wreck. I need to take the damage from the wreck. Man, why am I forgetting the trigger from the wreck? The whole deck is built around the wreck. I should take two dam damage, go to 13. Yeah, now I'm remembering. Okay, that's good. That's good to see. There is some sanity in us. A lot of people, well, a lot, but some people ask me, like, I, I see so many mistakes. Is that, is it really a mistake? I can answer truthfully, yes, it's really a mistake. It's just, we're also, we're also chatting about all sorts of other stuff while we're playing these games and we're talking strategy. And there we see, there's the Icy Manipulator. And it's interesting when you record yourself, I've said this a few times already, but when you record your own matches, 
you start to realize how many mistakes you actually make because a lot of mistakes you make or a lot of triggers you forget, um, you don't look back at your matches, so you don't even register that. Or else you wouldn't have made the mistake, of course. Uh, anyway, let's take a look what's happening here in the game. I believe it's quite interesting. During my upkeep, her folk is deciding what she wants to tap. So I believe she wants to tap my water elemental. And exactly, she taps my water elemental. In response, I untap my mana vault. So this is all still happening during my upkeep. So we're now going to go... Actually, I still got to take the damage from the rack. So I'm going to take three damage from the rack here. Going to drop to eight. Exactly. Now I'm going to draw for turn. So it's still my turn. Upkeep is kind of a big thing in these matches. With the manifold trigger and of course the, the icy decision and the rack decision to make. But I'm just passing the turn here, which is not good for me. I'm on eight. One card in hand. There's the attack. Going to drop to six and discard my mountain. Ah, this is not great. There's another swamp. It's looking really good for her folk here. I'm going to untap, take three damage again from the wreck. So now we can really see the wreck fully functioning. And of course, she's tapping down my, uh, I, uh, sorry, my water elemental again with her icy. I need, if I have a fireball, I can actually win this. I guess I don't because it's a sorcery and I'm passing the turn. I think fireball was my out. Because I have five, yeah, I, I I could have made it with the... Uh, no, I only have 8 for a Fireball. Anyway, I'm losing here, discarding my counter spell. ay 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 there's nothing that can save me. I'm going to die to the Rack. It is cool to see the Rack, though, in action. Oh, no, I'm going to die to a Drain Life. I'm going to die to a huge Migraine. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm dead. Well done, her folk. Well done with your deck. Venomous Rack. It was a lot of fun to play against your deck. And uh, I know, I know I probably missed some triggers and... We didn't play perfect, but uh, it was a fun matchup, and I just wanted to uh, to show you these games, to show you the deck of Herfolk Venomous Rack. I think it's a quite interesting deck uh, for uh, for you to maybe try out and per uh, further perfect in X points. It's uh, it's quite fun to play some casual X points games as well. Uh, for now, I'd like to thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, please feel free to like, comment, and share. These are three free things to do and you really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Yeah, because that's super helpful. And um, then there's one last thing I'd like to talk about and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page because I have my own Patreon on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Um, and over, over there, you can uh, support me financially. So if you like the content that I make, and if you want to help me continue making this for you guys, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. You can already support the channel for $1 a month. So that's just $12 a year. So it would be great if you could miss that to support me as a content creator. Please uh, visit patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. And now let's go to the end scroll.